Right, hello guys. Today we are going to be taking a look at how to revive like a a dead battery from a ride-on toy. Now I've just picked up one of those little electric dirt bikes for kids, and unfortunately both the batteries are shot. So I got a mega good deal on it. I paid forty-five bucks. It's like a five hundred buck bike. So happy, and I need to get this one fixed as well. Now this is a twelve volt battery. So I'm going to show you. If you don't know. If you've maybe left your kid's toy uncharged for pure ages and ages and you're having difficulty with the charger, I've got a smart charger as well and they're too smart. So when you put them on and the voltage is too low, it just won't charge it whatsoever. It comes up as an error. Now the cheaper old fashioned chargers, they just constantly blast voltage in no matter what, they don't care. So they're the things that you need for boosting it. They have a way of reviving these, but yeah, I'll show you the voltage. We'll stick the voltage on 20 volts since this is a 12 volt. We won't want to go less in case we blow the machine. So about 5.2 volts, pretty much. That's why the smart charger is not detecting it because it's below 10.9. So, let's get this battery working again. Now, first of all, we want to pop the cap. I'll have three batteries to fix, so in time it's probably going to take a couple of days for me to fix the other batteries. Right, there's the cap off. We'll bring you over. This is a sealed lead acid battery. So we'll bring the caps off. These are just little rubber caps. Now if you notice, see how they're sucked in? That tells me the cells are empty inside there. It's caused a vacuum in sucking those lids down. Now those are nothing, they're just little rubber tips. Sometimes you'll hear them But remember, it's no joke, it's battery acid in here. So get your eye protection on. I will do. And I'll see you at the next part. Okay, so I have a cup of water here that is... This is deionized water, but you really want distilled water. Even rain water will do. And that'll be to refill the cells again. But do note that when recharging the cells, the cells will absorb some water. And the battery won't just be good to go after that. Once you've gave it a cycle, it might drink some of the water, so to say, and you just want to top it back up again. Get it through its cycle, and then all will be well. Now, I'm going to use a jump start kit for a car. It's just a 12 volt jump start kit, but uh, you could use another 12 volt battery, and all you're going to do is link positive to positive, negative to negative, and just let the power from the other pack leach over into this until they equal and that'll bring the voltage up high enough to trick the smart chargers because most chargers nowadays are smart chargers they just got some little bugs inside that are too smart and stop things from happening now, I don't know if you can see but down inside here you can't really see you can see the heads of the cells and they need to be covered in water. Now sometimes if you're just pouring it in by other means, air bubbles can form inside this little bit here and it stops the water from going down and might let you think it's full. That's why I use one of these little medicine syringe. It helps, this bit helps poke down past the hole, fill the cell up quicker. So, you just take Place in. And just do that to them all. But yeah, checking out the batteries for the electric bike that I just got. They're like 70 bucks a piece. I was considering just getting them to stop the hassle, but hey, what's the hassle of popping the cap and adding a bit of water? It's like water in a plant, really, isn't it? It's not worth avoiding to pay 140 bucks for two batteries just to make up 24 volts anyway. It's not really a lot of power. When a 
I could just fix the batteries myself and get them going again. Now, things like these lead acid batteries are meant to be charging anyway. Like, they're more commonly known as a car battery, but a car has an alternator that's charging at over 14 volts the whole time, so the battery's permanently being, like, trickle charged anyway. So, apart from that, most of the things just sit. They're barely ever being used to be recharged. And a lot of them are in kids' ride-on toys. This has taken a lot, a lot of water. Yeah, a lot of the kids ride on toys. You use them a couple of times one week and then they may be put away in the cupboard for a month or so. It's always best to charge them before you stick them away in the cupboard. So you've had your charge them, go out, have your fun in them. And then when you bring them back home again, it's just always wise to charge them before storing them. It's a good practice with any lead acid battery. Right, we're nearly there. I would say the heads of all of the above are filled. And good to go. Right. So next we'll move on to the next, but that's them filled now. Some people will say uh, don't leave the caps on for the next bit, but I always put the caps on. I don't really fancy some spurting acid jumping out, bubbling away. Not really into that kind of game. Right. We've got that done. Right, next we'll get it set up for getting the battery's voltage to rise since the charger can't do it. So we'll get onto that part. So a quick look at it, it's like a standard 12 volt jump start kit, booster pack, car jump start pack, whatever you want to call it. Defibrillator for a vroom vroom, <laughs> anything you want. We're just going to use this, it's just a battery similar to this. It's inside it, that's all it is, and the wires come out and attach to your car, it's simple. But this is a very, very handy tool for lots of things. So, we'll get this set up. And remember, we were sitting at 5 volts, 5.2 volts we were sitting at. And we're going to take the jump start kit. Rig it up onto the positive. Always put the positive on first and take it off last. And there it is on the negative. And we're just gonna get a better view of that. Mines are just grabbed onto the terminals that are there, depending. Sometimes they're like screw holes where you put the little ring clips on and a screw down into the terminal. Other ones have like butt connectors on them. Other ones are soldered on. These were soldered, so I'm just pinching onto the points to let it take charge. Now this battery's charged up to about probably well at least 13 volts I would say. So it's gonna sap the energy into this battery, and this is gonna spike from 5.2 up to around maybe 11.3 but by that point it'll be way beyond the smart charger's warning detection and as soon as we put the smart charger on it it'll start charging it back up again and we will have revived the battery as easy as that but yeah in between depending on how long the battery's been sitting that you've maybe found or been given or you know exactly how long it's been sitting it, depending on how much it will drink, it might only need a little top up, it might drink majority of this again and I will have to re-top it back up again. But yeah, apart from that, that's it. You're just trickle charging with this. So other chargers like trickle chargers and stuff, you'll be able to latch onto these batteries and get their amperage and their volts up enough. If there's not enough volts in the battery, smart chargers will not detect it stupid and that's what people mean by they're too smart for their own good
and yeah they're handy for these new lipo and lithium ion batteries because this they are dangerous seriously dangerous if used wrong they can be very explosive but yeah i'll go for just now and stop the waffling and we'll leave this just now and we'll come back and check on it and see where the amperage is at once it's off we'll have a look inside the caps and see if the water's dropped below the cells if it has we'll just top it up so they're above the cells again and put these back on let it do it again and then we'll be back when the water's settled and the voltage is up and we'll get the charger applied right we've only had it on a little bit but i do want to show you so well take this off just now and it was on 5.2 volts so it's probably went up by a little bit at least get this out of the way it was 5.2 see now it's 10.8 I don't know if you can see that, but it's 10.8 and I've literally only been away half an hour, so it's boosted up. Now I do have an imitation IMAX B6AC, and we will plug it in. Sure they cannot touch. Now I will stick this on. I'm not sure what the charge is, but I'm sure that's absolutely fine. Uh, we will maybe just drop it down. Oh, where are we? We'll drop it back down to one amp, and that'll be good enough for us. So we'll see if it'll trigger. Now it was saying low voltage and it would refuse to charge. Sometimes it'll do this. If you notice the amperage is staying zero zero. So when this gets to 25 it might actually say it's full and not charge it. Which most smart chargers have a different way of doing that but it's the same thing. It's sensing false voltage. There we go. So it's not ready yet so i just wanted to show you that and i'm glad i caught it so we'll get this off and we'll hook the booster pack back on it until it's up to like 11 volts and then we'll stick this back on and bob's your auntie everything should be good so we'll rig this back up again and we'll be all right in about an hour Right, so we've had it on for a little bit now. I'll take it off. Give the voltage a little check and see if it's went up any. Should have. 11.6. Ooh, that could get us in the ballpark. Hopefully it takes. Or maybe this one is shot. But I guess we'll find out. Yeah, see how the amps is shot up now to three. Back to two, it'll go to three and maybe four. Before the 25 seconds. So I think this will start charging now. Come on. Yeah, see how it's 26, 27. That's it, guys. That's the battery fixed and already cycling. So what I'll do is this runs for, I think, a two hour charge. So I'll let it take its two hour course, take it off, let the battery chill and open up the caps again and see if any of the, the parts inside need filled, the cells need to be covered in water. And if so, I'll just rectify that, stick it back on another charge. 
and that's it. So as you can see, that's how you trick a smart charger into charging your stuff. All I used was a jump start pack, but you could use another similar battery, just link wires from red to red, black to black, and the power from the battery will seep and trickle over into this one, boosting the voltage up, tricking the smart charger into working it. See? Now I've got to go and do another two batteries similar to this to get the electric bike going. That yeah, should be a doddle. But anyway, that's it guys. I'll go for just now because this video is probably going to be quite long. A long way of showing you how to charge a battery, but rather than buy new ones, this is how you recover them. So, good luck and if this helps you in any way, please leave a thumbs up or come back and give us a comment. I don't even mind if it's cheeky. Bye for now, guys.